Tornadoes raked the Midwest and South today for the second time this week. At least three people were killed in Indiana, and towns in four states were hard hit. Throughout the day, sightings of funnel clouds, like this one in Alabama, kept coming. One of the worst hit late this afternoon, blasting two towns in southern Indiana. A sheriff reported the town of Marysville, home to 1,900 people, was completely gone and nearby Henryville was nearly as bad. Other storms also caused damage north of Louisville, Kentucky, near Chattanooga, Tennessee, and just outside Huntsville, Alabama. In Bradley County, Tennessee, near Chattanooga, high winds tore down the wall of a hardware store and knocked over several tractor trailers. When it hit, I mean, it's, the noise is unbelievable. Um, you know, everything's moving, the pressure is, the pressure is just unbelievable. I mean, stuff started flying around the room which is where I was. I mean, I could feel the stuff blowing into my face. And, uh, you know, you begin to pray quick, you know. <laughs> you can say some quick prayers. In now, Alabama, a number of houses that, and a middle school were severely, severely damaged in Meridianville. Fine, thousands of students there and in other heard, states had been sent home in advance. Been... Earlier this week, another round of tornadoes had wrecked much of Harrisburg, Illinois, and I killed mean, 13 people in several states. A short time ago, I spoke to Major Chuck Adams of the Clark County Sheriff's Department in southern Indiana. Major Adams, uh, thanks for joining us. First start with the town of Marysville. It sounds like terrible destruction there. What can you tell us? Well, uh, first reported, Jeff, uh, in Marysville uh, was certainly called in from citizens uh, with them, certain, uh, them just stating that Marysville was completely gone. I do have two officers that have... Uh, uh, been in the Marysville area since that time, and there is some severe damage and uh, and things like that, but uh, certainly not as bad as first reported. We're we're concentrating most of our efforts right now to a little northern uh, town uh, here from the county seat, uh, Henryville, Indiana. And it seems to be that's where our most uh, damage has occurred. Can you tell, was this uh, one tornado, multiple tornadoes? Do, do, do you know at this point? Uh, no, I sure don't know at this point. Uh, it, it seems like our damage has stretched from uh, the far western part of the county all the way to the eastern part, probably about a 25-mile stretch uh, if you have to drive that. But uh, it looks like uh, Henryville, which is approximately uh, 19 miles north of Louisville, Kentucky, uh, seems to be our are heavily, have most heavily hit. Uh, we did have a report uh, earlier when school was going on, uh, before school let out, that uh, the Henryville High School had been struck with heavy damage. There were students inside. Uh, but since the time I've spoken with my school resource officer that's uh, assigned to that, that high school, and all the students were evacuated with, with very minor injuries, uh, just a few cuts and abrasions but uh, no injuries whatsoever to any of the students that were life-threatening. I do have one reported fatality also in the Henryville area at this time, but I really can't even say whether that's storm-related. Uh, as of now, the coroner hasn't even shown up at the scene. Well, what about the local and state response at this point? What are you able to do? Well, we're just, uh, I've got, uh, we're taking a list here at the office. I've got an we're being innovated by calls from citizens and, and people wanting to volunteer. I've got other uh, counties, uh, surrounding counties, bringing in their street and highway department uh, crews to clear some of the roadways. Of course, we've got all the uh, public service uh, companies uh, out tonight, and we're just trying to, to clear everything up and, and, and take all the calls as they come in. All right, Major Chuck Adams, thanks so much for joining us, and good luck to everyone there. Okay, thank you very much. And we're joined live now by Greg Carbon, a meteorologist for the National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center. Well, Greg Carbon, what can you tell us now about the number and power of these tornadoes? Well, it's been one of those unfortunate days that we happen to see, especially in that transition from late winter into spring. Uh, this came on uh, quite rapidly this morning. However, the forecast from the NOAA Storm Prediction Center were right on target a few days ago. Very worrisome when we see storms developing uh, so rapidly in the morning hours when we know the day will unfold in such a way as to bring this devastation and our thoughts go out to those people in the area affected today. Well, so it, is, it, is it when you say a storm, is it one tornado, many tornadoes? Do you know at this point? 
Well, it defines how you define the storm. Essentially, we're looking at a very large area of low pressure, a cyclone, really, that uh, is driving most of this activity. And then within that larger circulation are these thunderstorms that uh, move rapidly across the landscape, the lower Ohio Valley and Midwest, really with the areas today most at risk for tornadoes. And obviously, we saw long track damaging tornadoes with part of a larger cyclone. So what, what causes this? Well, it's really the transition season. We still have uh, the wind speeds in the atmosphere that are very common in the winter months, very powerful wind speeds in the upper levels of the atmosphere, the jet stream level, deep low pressure systems that we see bring blizzard conditions across parts of the northern plains the last couple of days. But to the south of those blizzard conditions where you have the warm air and moisture that starts to increase as we move into the springtime months, that brings together the ingredients needed for thunderstorm development. And then the wind shear brings the other ingredient that's needed for violent tornadoes. And, unfortunately. And, and would this be thought of as unusual right now or, or whether in uh, power of the storm or timing of the storm? Well, when we see violent weather like this, almost all of these events are rather unusual. So early in March, in the last dozen years or so, we've seen an events along these lines maybe uh, four times in the last dozen years. So uh, you can kind of see a return frequency on something like this perhaps every three to five years. Now, you mentioned the forecast. How much warning is there when something like this is coming? How much uh, ahead of time would the residents know that uh, what might be about to hit them? Well, we had that first event at midweek, and that kind of set the stage for this more significant event today. Uh, we were looking at the weather conditions for about the last five days, uh, looking at this Friday as being a particularly dangerous situation with these tornadoes. Uh, we ramp up our forecast because certainty is never really there uh, with these events. But you become a little more certain about the potential as you go forward in time. And early this morning, we knew this was going to be a bad day. We issued uh, particularly dangerous situation watches and uh, public outlooks, uh, basically spelling out the threat that existed across this area. So is your sense that your, your tracking ability is better and the ability on the ground to get the word out is, has, has become better over the years? It has. There's no question about that. Uh, the systems that are in place to give people the warnings they need to take appropriate action in advance of these storms are in place. Uh, many of these cities and towns do have siren systems, but there's also NOAA Weather Radio, uh, the broadcast media and emergency management partners that work with the National Weather Service are a pretty good group and a pretty good team to get the word out ahead of this dangerous weather, and hopefully we'll see the results in lower uh, fatalities and casualties, but unfortunately we sound like we have a few this evening. And what do you look for in the next few hours and days? This system will continue to be a danger overnight, uh, especially across portions of eastern Kentucky, Tennessee, across the Appalachians tonight, and then to the southeast tomorrow. The whole entire frontal system will move east and south throughout the night tonight and again pose a risk for some severe storms in Georgia and Florida tomorrow. All right, Greg Carbon of the National Weather Service, thanks very much. Thank you, Jeffrey.